can we can start. I'll I'll try not to mess with y'all too much today. Beautiful, beautiful marking moments we've been having in the presence of the Lord. Yesterday was so beautiful. I mean, I don't. I really. I, I told Lucy in the, uh, you know, I was sitting there. I said, I'm 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 really getting beyond words of of describing uh, God just coming in the room yes. and just never take it for granted. Never take it for granted. Uh, teaching moment for everyone. So this is really important because you, you guys were blessed as you went out, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you got filled. You got, you, God used you. How many of you were blessed? How many of you felt increase on your life as you went out? So teaching moment. We call this dwell internship. And we do life around the presence. So you're in the prayer room a lot, right? You're, you're here a lot. But the teaching moment is to sustain the dwell time. There has to be the give it away time. For a healthy, sustainable life. If you just stay in, in just dwell and never go out, that's a monk. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you have the natural rhythm of your life that God gives each one of us, and it's all different. But it's your blessing to take what he gives you and dwell and then you get to freely give. Freely you received, freely give. The, the word there is actually grace. Graciously you've received. Graciously give it away without cost. Right? So, the, so, so here's, here's the principle that we try to live by, and we've said for years and years and years, is that whatever God gives you in the kingdom you must give it away if it stays with you it will die so what God gives you revelation give it to someone else and help them it will grow it will become a big tree it will be blessed uh, the things you learned in the secret place help someone else find the secret place so you'll decode it for them. Like, you know, this is, this is what it was like for me. This is what, it, this is what happened. This, is, this will help you if you'll do this. And you help other people find the secret place. So Moses, you got filled with the spirit. Just be a, be a spirit-filled assassin. Just going around getting everybody filled with the spirit. Let the Lord lead you to. Like, You've given your testimony twice. Well, it's increasing already in your life. And so what the wealth God gives you, the treasure God gives you, it is, it is incumbent on us to, to not let it stop with us. You know, people use the analogy all the time. We're not the Dead Sea. The, the Dead Sea is dead because nothing flows out of it. It just flows into it. So nothing flows out of it. So life is not sustainable in the Dead Sea. Think the salt content. In fact, I think you don't even have to swim in the Dead Sea, do you? It's like you just like kind of like float around, whatever. So let me give you another example. God pours out revival on your church. Well, make sure that you export that everywhere you can. Give it away. Um, as much and as often as you can. I'm sorry, can I have just a little bit more light in the room, not on me, in the room, because it, it's very bright, and I, I can't see myself. <laughs> that didn't make sense. But anyway, I can't see you. So um, Matthew 6.33, and we've talk, been talking about healthy leadership, and I'm not going to drill down on you too deep. I really want to inspire you today. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first the kingdom. Now, you know that's a compound word, right? And that, that word kingdom is compound. It means the king. 
in his dominion. So how many know we're not in a democracy? Yeah. When you surrender your life, you don't get a vote. You have a king, and he is a perfect king. He's a compassionate king, and he is, he is worth all our trust, our devotion, everything. So seek first. Like So the highest priority of your life is to go after this king, to seek this king and his dominion. Okay? Seek first. So the principle here is everything else is going to fall in line. What's your destiny? It'll fall in line. What's your career? It'll fall in line. You know, I was thinking about, I think it's okay to say his name publicly because it's a wonderful testimony. But I was thinking about Joel Osteen this morning. I don't know, Joel, Joel probably wouldn't remember me. But we I've been around the Osteen family since I was first saved. I think Joel was in high school. Such a great guy. Such a genuine uh, genuinely probably one of the nicest people you could ever meet. And he went to Oral Roberts University. This is his testimony. I hope I get it right. He went to Oral Roberts University. And he was there, but he just, it didn't fit him. And he said, he's, he called his father, who was John Osteen, who was my, really my first spiritual father I ever had. He called him and he said, Dad, I don't want to be here. I feel to come home and to start the television production and I want to go behind the scenes and I want to present you to the world. And he came home and started the production and for years and years and years it, it was the foremost production that was there. God gifted it, God blessed it. He was so happy behind the scenes. Never even had a thought preaching. Seek first the kingdom. Yeah. Wow. Seek first the kingdom. He was, it, 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 it wasn't even a thought in it, of his destiny. He wasn't like tormented over his destiny. Following his heart, serving his father. And, his, and when his father uh, went, was, you know, went home to be with the Lord, uh, that week he, he, he asked he said, I'm going to ask Joel to preach. And um, his wife is called Dodie, lovely, beautiful saint of God. I've been mu actually much closer to her. Actually, she and Lucy, Pastor Lucy, have the same birthday. So October 22nd. And so she dedicated this facility when we moved in. And uh, I got to be with her at the hospital a few times praying for people. And also when Pastor John had his bypass surgery, the Lord just happened to have me at the hospital that day. In fact, he told me to go. And I was there and he was having his bypass. And she, he said, I'm going to ask Joel to, to speak. And she laughed. She said, Joel wasn't going to speak. He ain't going to do that. Like laugh like, you know, like, you know how it is. We know our kids. You know, we got it figured out, whatever. And so something touched Joel's heart. He took his father's Bible and his father's shoes. He stepped on stage. His dad went to heaven. Along that timeline, not sure exactly. And he never stopped speaking. Wow. Seek first the kingdom. Just be about your father's business. God knows how, when it's time, listen, when it's your time for change or promotion, if you're genuinely seeking the Lord's heart and putting this king first, loving him with all your heart and following him, he knows how to send the prophet to your house and say, have you not another son? We will not sit down until this son comes oh because I'm going to anoint the next king of Israel. When David is just seeking first the heart of his father with a few sheep, a few sheep. He didn't even have a big sheep church. He wasn't even famous. In fact, he, the theologians suppose that he may not have been invited 
I mean, how would you like it? The prophet comes to town, the family gathers, and you weren't invited to your own family gathering. And people submit, or some theologians feel it was because David may have been illegitimate. So he was not invited, but God invited him to the party. You want God to invite you to the party. <laughs> and when it's time, trust me, God knows how to get you where you're supposed to be. Wow. Years ago, I was in Hong Kong, and I, I remember there were many of these administrative moments that I had with the Lord as I traveled. Let, let me finish the scripture, but seek first the king, the kingdom, uh, of God and his righteousness or his purpose, his cause or his heart. Put his heart first, not our agenda. So good. Not our demand. Put his agenda first. It, it just you say, I don't know if I like I got a I got plans. I got whatever. Trust him. Love him. Put him first. All the burdens come off your shoulders. All the burdens of being in control, figuring it out, having to be better, having to have the perfect GPA, having to be at the right time. You can't do it all. You can't do it all. Just love him. It's, it, it, when he turns, when he decides to highlight something and he wants you, the king can get you there. He'll send angels on assignment to get you in the place. <laughs> Nothing will stop it. It's just the way to live, guys. It's like, you, you know what? A person living like that, you can't steal from them. You can't steal their place. They'll give it away. They'll get 10 more tomorrow. You can't steal from them. You can't, you can't, you can't cheat them can't talk bad about him enough because God's talking good about him. He knows who loves him. And he knows who's working a deal and he knows who's in first love. He loves them both, but he's loving those with his, after his righteousness, his, his purposes, his causes. Like So when I'm putting the kingdom first, I'm putting his heart first. So his heart has priority. That's what he wants. That's what he gets. God's going to use in the last days the heart of David. What was the heart of David? He was a man not after his own heart. He was a man after God's heart. He was a man after my heart. In other words, that's what God's looking for in leaders. Are you after your agenda? Are you after, uh, uh, is, it, is your worship to minister What's in my heart? That's what he's looking for. And it just takes away all the fog, takes away all the pressure, takes away all the, 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 the drive and some of this practical stuff I'll t speak to you about in just a moment. But God in his righteousness and all these things, what things? More things than you can imagine. Yeah. Universe of things, yeah. universe of moments. Yeah. More than the stars, all these things. You'll be sitting at breakfast and you'll be sitting there going, God, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Oh, I'm just remembering some of the things. I'm just remembering this or that, you know. You know, you, you want to you wanna drive down the road and you realize you're sitting in a car God gave you. You want to look at the ring on your hand and say, oh, thank you, God. I remember you gave me that. You want the golf clubs in the back seat that you realize, oh, God, you blessed me with that. Oh, God, I thank you for this. I thank you for that vacation. I thank you for that. You're ministering back to me. And it's just a wonderful way. All these things will be added unto you. And Verse 34 says, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about your destiny. Don't worry about your big break. Don't worry about the next stage or whatever you're going to stand on. Don't even worry about who you're going to marry. Don't worry about, you know, uh, everything. God is administrating your life. You don't want to accelerate it and you don't want to delay it. 
You want to be right on time. Yeah. Right? You know, every young person like, oh, especially ministry, worship, whatever. And it seems like the bigger the crowd, the bigger the stage. Like, that's the, the thing. I, I look back now as I do that, and I am so thankful. <laughs> he did not let me step on some stages that I was not prepared for. I am so thankful. I'm not, still not sure I'm prepared, but I'm so <laughs> thankful uh, because there's a difference in walking up there to, with agenda and then there's a, a versus walking up there with simply the heart of the king. Yes. Yes. Now, can I tell you something about Jesus? Yes. Can I tell you something about him? Yes. He's the easiest person to please you will ever know. He is so gracious. He is so good. He is so good. So I started to tell, oh, I was in Hong Kong. And I remember, y'all heard me tell this dream. I, I, I remember I had a dream. And I'm talking about how God, if you'll just be after his heart, you may not know how it's all going to work, but he's, gonna, he's going to administrate it. He's going to open the doors in the perfect timing. You may be walking towards the door. It's closed, it's closed, it's closed. The next thing you think, oh, it opened, it opened. Um, and I remember uh, a dream I had a while back. And I, was, I saw a long, long banquet table. It, it may have been longer than this room. It was the most opulent, like high governmental, kingly, opulent table decorations, huge arrangements. The, the plates, the china seemed like gold. It, it looked like there would be 14 knives and forks stacking out from the plate. And I remember that I was seated at this governmental table. And I looked down at the plate and I thought, how? Like, I don't even know what, I don't even know what fork or spoon to pick up. By the way, it's the one on the outside as the meal goes. You slowly go to the meal. So if you ever get in that situation, start on the outside and work in. And then don't hold it and lick it. Let them take it and get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I start having fun with y'all and forget we're broadcasting and, <laughs> and then it's completely unusable, unusable. So anyway, I'm there and in the dream, I'm seated at the table and it's like really intense and I don't know what to pick up. I don't know what to do, but standing behind each one of us in the dream in long tail tucks bright red tuxedo was a helper. And every time I didn't know what to do, this incredibly dressed servant helper would step forward and whisper in my ear, it's this one, and then back up. And I woke up from the dream. Beautiful. God sends us to Hong Kong, and it's very governmental with emerging leaders in China and in the city are coming in. Many people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit. They're getting saved. It's one of the most beautiful experiences um, that you can imagine. The prophetic was strong. It was just... Amazing, And I remember there was a family that I got to minister to that were uber, uber, uber wealthy. Some of the most wealthy people in the world. And they were just the most kind, humble people. And they said, you must be at this. It was actually a full gospel business meeting at the, full, at the Four Seasons Hotel. They had just built the hotel overlook, looking Hong Kong Harbor. They said, you must be here at this time, at this, at this date, to be at the meeting. 
And I had just come in from China. I was dirty. <laughs> I had the, the currency, which is renminbi. I had, I had no Hong Kong dollars. I hadn't even had time. I hadn't even really had time to, to clean up. Your, you know, when you travel, your clothes are wrinkled, everything. And I've got to go to the Four Seasons. And I don't even, and I get to the door, and there's a little doorkeeper. And I didn't have the, it was like $100 a plate. Uh, I didn't have the money, and, I, and they wouldn't let me in. So I turned around, and I was like, oh, my Jesus. How are you? I get it. And I was, like, running around the mall trying to find uh, money to get in the room. And uh, I finally think I, I changed some money at an ATM, and I come running back, and my friend, beautiful, wonderful lady, was waiting for me. She goes, where have you been? And I said, I, I was trying to get the money to get in. And the poor little guy that wouldn't let me in was shaking in fear over on the side because she had let him know, no, he should have let me in. So she marched, come with me. She grabs me by the hand, marches me to the head table, says, sit here, right next to the head person. And they're literally guys, all billionaires sitting around the table. And I go... And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I'm from Houston. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the south side. Uh, <laughs> I might have a couple thousand in my checking account. Uh, <laughs> you're sitting there in that moment, very overwhelmed and very like, uh, like you can put pressure on yourself. And as I sat there, I, my head was down. And I heard the Lord say, that's all he said, remember the dream. And I knew then that God was administrating. And I, I had the privilege of ministering Jesus to those people that you would never be able to get to at that time. I'm saying, just love him. And he'll seat you at the table. That's nice. your, your clothes may be wrinkled at the moment. You may not have the, the money, but he'll, he will, there'll always be that vulnerable side, but he'll, he knows how to seat you at the table. Uh, a, few, uh, a few months later, I was there again, and there was a, a king who was there ministering. And I was really kind of troubled in my spirit because I felt things were a little divisive. And I did not want to be at the meeting. He will, he will get you at the table when you don't want to be at the table. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I remember, I knew, I knew, David, I knew, like, I know my name. In the morning, my name was not on the list to sit at the king's table. And I was actually kind of happy with that. I'd rather go. You know, a little more relaxing because there's all this protocol, all this your majesty stuff, all this whatever, you know. It's like people like really awakened all of that stuff. And, and I, but, but come afternoon, something would shift and my name would go on the list. And every evening, I'd be seated at the table Eyes to eyes with the king. Literally couldn't make it happen in a lifetime. That's why you want Jesus administrating your life. That's why just be content in the season you're in. When it's time to shift, your name will go on the list. <laughs> and the doors will open. Does that help you? So let me give you just some practical things here about this. So, so be faithful to the season you're in. This is the one thing you can do. Wherever you are that you know it's the Lord assigned you to in that season, love him first and be faithful. Just be faithful. Be faithful like David with a few sheep. 
Just be faithful at the internship. Be faithful on staff. Be faithful with it. Maybe it's not your dream, but be faithful with what it is today. Just be faithful. This is the one thing you can do because God really cannot promote unfaithfulness. Wow. So just be there, whether it feels good at the moment or not, whatever. Put all that aside and just say, I am a faithful person. I am a faithful man. I am faithful to my wife. I am faithful to my friends. I am faithful to the church. And I am faithful to the heart of Jesus. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Be faithful with your quiet time. Yeah, so good. Be faithful to talk to him. Yeah. We make it too hard. Yeah. Just be faithful to follow him and do what he asks you to do. So be faithful. Know what's committed to you at the moment. And just do it with all your heart. You say, oh, it's beneath me. Oh, it's not my dream. Oh, it's not. But just do it with your heart. Okay. God will change it because he has your heart. Oh, He'll change so it cool. when you're ready. So good. He'll change it and you'll be prepared. The next season will fit you like a garment. Oh, but the last thing you want to do is go into a season and the, cl- and the clothes don't fit. Every loving mother buys clothes for their children when they start school. And she's also smart, so she buys them all too big. So you go to school, kindergarten, look like a freak. Your shoes are out here. You're like walking around. You got clown shoes on. You got baggy pants. You got shirt that you got to roll up about five times, right? It's good for you. You're just growing into the garments that are there, right? (laughs) And then she's also wise, so she gets her money's worth. So by the time you graduate, your pants are high waters. Your your feet are growing out the front of your shoes. And and, and so what, what is it? It's time for new clothes. It'll be obvious. It'll be obvious uh, to everyone around. It's a time and a season, and yes, this change. Wow. This change is God. <laughs> this change is God. You don't have to beat the doors down. Much better to let God open the door. Do you know he said, I will close doors that no man can close, and I will open doors that no man can open. It was impossible for me to sit at those tables, but he can open the door. Yeah. Think about the humility of God to be your door opener. Every gentleman opens the door for the lady. How many have ever been to a fine uh, hotel, resort? What do they have? They have a, you don't open your own door. Welcome, sir. Welcome, man. What you want is the Lord to say, welcome, to the next season. Open the door. He has the humility. Think about that. He has the humility to serve us and he opens doors. Once you've experienced God opening the doors for you, you don't ever want to open another door the rest of your life. <laughs> and again, I'm not saying like, you know, you can, don't get in a ditch with the stuff I'm saying like, what are you doing? I'm sitting here in the car in the heat till the Lord opens the door and I can get out and go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Y'all understand the difference, right? I'm, I'm speaking in spiritual <laughs> analogies. You can get uh, hyper-religious <laughs> on anything and it's not, it's not what I mean. Uh, so... The next thing, so, so seek first the kingdom. So this goes to the agenda of your life. Okay, so we have a crisis of people leading, singing, preaching, building out of personal ambition. Mm. So part of the prayer room is where the personal ambition 
you know, why, why, would I, why would I trust him? Because I fall in love with him. So then my ambition begins to be the king. So good leaders have dealt with this issue of, of the ambition of my life. So what you want is ambition because, listen, you can have what you think is the stars and it will be empty. Wow, yeah, wow. You know, like I arrived at my destination, wow. but whoops, wow. there wasn't any presence in that destination. Wow. wasn't a lot of pressure in that destination. Wow. You know, oh, I got to pay all the bills at this destination. Right. You don't want that. Okay. What you want is your ambition to become your passion so listen most people in the world live out of talent and ability and that's what the world system develops but you can take a and that doesn't mean you'll be successful just because you develop your talent doesn't make you successful in fact, especially if your heart's not in that, what, what, will ha what, what will run circles around it is you take a person with half the talent but full of passion, they'll run circles around the talented person. Learn to find the passion, and, the, and we're saying the highest is first love. Learn to find the passion that you have and, and, and your desire for him. Um, so we have to lead out of, so, so what was Jesus' passion? Obviously saving us. Obviously he left his throne in glory, he came here. But what was his passion? Every day, Father's heart. Every day, Father's heart. Every day, what I see my father do, what I hear my father speak, that was his passion. Now, he had more talent than anybody. <laughs> but even Jesus surrendered his ability to the passion of his father Beautiful. and his father's heart. Amen? That's a, that will help you um, find and walk quite naturally in the, the purposes of God for your life. Um, so... You know, and I know we all do this. We all, we all have to get a job, have to get a paycheck. We learn to do that. But, but even in, in that, are you just living for a paycheck? Or are you saying, this is my assignment right now, and I'm going to do it with passion unto the Lord, right? Makes all the difference. Then, then the people at work become something. Not just a paycheck. Then the, the, the purpose of God in that season where he has you. So learn to pray into those things. Like, okay, God, I'm here. What do you want me to do while I'm flipping burgers? Show me the, the, my passion is for you. I'm not here just for a paycheck, Right? And uh, it becomes something, and, and I realize, I get it. We, we all have to do things at times we don't want to do. But, but well, listen, working for a paycheck is routine. Living out of your passion is overflowing life. It is overwhelming fulfillment that you have. So, so just hold on to that, and you will do that. Um, Passion will keep you from settling. Puts, a, puts that purpose in you. Um, these are those who've been on staff here forever have heard these quotes. They can say I'm better than me. But here's a couple of my, uh, my, il my illustration quotes to help define passion. In China, a very revered Com uh, a family is Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor is the first Westerner who took the gospel inland to mainland China. Four or five generations later, 
the ministry goes to inland China missions, I believe. And he's still revered as uh, shifting many, many things. And what he did was great. One of the things that changed it is he quit dressing like a Westerner and he started dressing like a common Chinese person, even with, I forget what they call it, but he shaved his head. This was, this was uh, rejected by many Westerners, but he began to find common ground with the Chinese and much persecution, sleeping on the little boats and the things that they did. Listen to, listen to passion. Listen to, to a person not just serving for a paycheck, Here's passion. This is what Hudson Taylor said. If I had a thousand lives, I would give them all for China. If I had a thousand lives, he was in his assignment. He was in a purpose. So that person becomes unstoppable. <laughs> if I had a thousand lives, isn't that beautiful? Another, another great, great man that you've heard of is Livingston. How many have heard of Livingston? Okay, so Livingston was the first Western missionary to take the gospel inland to Africa. And he loved the African people. He went in. He had health problems. He took a little goat around with him and had the goat's milk. And he, had, he had spears from different tribes that he had made peace with so he could go further and further into the inland places. And, um, and he says, this is, this is what he said. This is when God shifts the kingdom purpose into your heart. This is what he says. He said, he said, uh, sometimes in the morning sun, I see the smoke of a thousand villages who have not yet heard the good news of Jesus Christ. He could close his eyes. He could see the smoke of a thousand villages that hadn't yet heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I was with our, my friend, uh, um, uh, uh, Phil uh, Smithhurst, and um, he invited me to, uh, I was preaching in Florida. He said, hey, I know you're a sailor. I've got my catamaran. They have a marine division where they want to teach missionaries to go to the islands. I think it's a pretty cool thing. We need to start a marine division. Anyway, he has a 50-foot catamaran sailboat. And he said, hey, I'm in Nassau. Why don't you catch a flight, come to Nassau, and we'll sail it back to Florida and to, to do it. So while I was on the boat with him, I asked him about this story. He's a very studied. He lives just outside of Livingstone and uh, where Victoria Falls is right there, just outside of that. And... <clears throat> I said, hey, is that a true story about Livingston and his funeral? And he said, it's absolutely true. And I, I, this is the most amazing thing. Here was this man who showed the love of Jesus, who lived to make him known. And when he died, the Africans, to honor him, sewed him up in some kind of, his body in some kind of, I don't know what fabric, I don't know what they had. They sewed his body up. They put him on his shoulders, on their shoulders, and would pass him from tribe to tribe across the continent of Africa to honor the man who brought them the gospel. The family people sent messengers. I don't know how they got the messages to them. And they said, send his body home. <laughs> and uh, they wouldn't. <laughs> they just kept marching his body. 
So in the end, they said, send his body home. And what they did is they said, no. And they took his body. It's a little, little strong, y'all. But they did it. They took his body. They cut his heart out. And they buried his heart in African soil. And said he's African. And they sent his heartless body back home. One man's passion began to bring Christ to a land, to a name, to a place of people living out of not talent, not ambition, self-sacrificing love for the king and his love for people. So what happens is, uh, and I'll just stop here. But what happens is in the dwell room, in this place of loving this king first, in this place of your heart going in neutral, it doesn't matter, Lord. It doesn't matter it, it, my life. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It only matters that I get to be with you. In that place of surrender, it is at that point that God deposits something, Jesus deposits something in your heart that's his desire that he carries for the world that he loves. He does that to lovers that he can trust. And he takes part of his heart and he puts it in your heart. And when you do, you will awaken with the dimension of the heart and the love of Jesus that will be an expression and devotion of your love for him to love people. Whatever you get in the kingdom that the king gives you, tear the loaf. Yes. Amen. Tear the loaf. Be a maniac. Tear in the love. <laughs> Give his heart away everywhere to where they won't bury your body. They'll just, if you go home, they'll know someone who had the love of Jesus was in our midst. Beautiful. Somebody with the love of Jesus. My, my little friend Annie, who was the, I've told you about, who was the, uh, The nun. And, uh, you know, they, they all, they had the upper room in the convent and then she went out and she found the baptism of the Holy Spirit among the Protestants and she, she left being a nun and not because, you know, she was renouncing all that, but just, she just went with the Lord sent her and she, she just had a prayer house back when nobody even knew what a prayer house was. And people would just come and encounter Jesus. And she had a coffee house. And this is back in the, the days of uh, like just stoners. And she'd have a coffee house and they'd be, uh, it wasn't Christian like outward. And um, they'd come in and they'd be sitting around the deal and she'd just little... Uh, unassuming, nothing attractive about her that you would find outstanding. Um, you, you know, she'd pick up the guitar, sit on a bench, and start singing some kind of <laughs> heavenly song. And Deliverance would hit people in mass sitting in that place. Heaven would come down in the midst of a coffee shop. And people's lives would be changed just because a friend of Jesus picked up a guitar and ministered to him as a friend. 
someone who knows him. I wish when I was 20 or 25 or even 30 or 35 or I wish someone would have told me this. Because I was desperate to not fail in life. I was desperate to accomplish or looking for what I thought I needed. And it was so simple. It was so simple all along. Seek first the king in his heart and live for the advancement of it. Everything else will be added to your life in the season. And I promise you, it won't be one second before. (laughs) But in the season, it's supposed to be. You can walk with assurance. You can walk with accomplishment. To the leaders here on staff, the things God's given you, They belong to him, honestly. Give them away. Tear the loaf. Don't compete. Wash feet. (laughs) Just wash feet. Did I tell y'all, have I shared with this group when the Lord visited me? It was about 1993. I was in a men's meeting. And I sensed my direction was changing, but I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I still didn't understand these things I'm telling you today. But I remember being in this men's meeting, but I always loved pastors, always loved churches. I never could mind my own business. My mind was never just on my own sheepfold. It was on everybody's sheepfold. And it wasn't as a busybody. It was just care. And I remember being in the meeting and they said, let's wash, let's wash the pastor's feet. Have I told you all this? There was like 33 pastors. Have I told you this? There was... 33 pastors, I I remember that number, it may not be exact. There was a lot of pastors. There was about 1,200 people in the room. Folks, I did not know what was gonna happen in a few seconds. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know, but it was one of those, we won't be seated at the table. And I remember They said, I I felt nothing. I I didn't know anything was up. We we didn't have even uh, a tenth of the glory back then we experience now. And I remember, they said, uh, Pastor Randy, come wash the feet with us. And I I just grabbed, we did it, just took a little towel symbolically. And I walk over to a man I did not know who was a pastor, seemed like a great man. And I took the towel, and when I did, I knelt down uh, with an act to wash his feet. And at that moment when my, my, I think it was my right knee hit the ground, faster than light, I was gone in the spirit. I was, my body was here but I was gone into the presence of Jesus in a reality that's more real than me talking to you right now. Undeniable reality. It was like an eternal reality. And suddenly I'm kneeling there with this towel and there is a leg in front of me that is a bare leg with a Roman sandal. And I hear the Lord, it was the Lord. And I hear the Lord say, will you wash my men's feet? And I was, I freaked out. I began to wail loud. I didn't, promise you, I promise you, 
When Jesus splits the eastern sky, you will not be dignified. I promise you. It will not be a quiet church service when you see Jesus. I promise you, you're going to be crazy. Crazy, because you will know him face to face. I felt like it was a moment. I never saw his face. I couldn't see his lips move, but in my spirit, I heard him speak. And I began to wail, and I'm like, Jesus, I can't believe cannot believe you would show, reveal yourself. I, I, I just began to cry my eyes out. And he said, this is what he said to me. Don't remember, don't compete, wash feet. The higher you go, the lower you go on this earth. The lower you go, the freer you'll be. You, you, men can't control you then. Manipulation can't stop you. People with angles don't get a grip on your life. You're a free man and woman of God. So there's a dignity, there's a sonship in you, but there's a freedom to serve. It's a freedom to go low with the heart of Jesus because your heart is already married to another. Success looks like Jesus. It just looks like Jesus. So, and listen, maybe if your songs are never heard by the world, is it okay that they're heard by him? <laughs> they belong to him. It's his business. Again, he knows how to open the door at the moment and the timing and the purposes of God. So he said, he said this is what he said to me. Wash their feet. I didn't know what that meant. I had no clue what that meant. To me, it means now, get on an airplane. Nobody's going to pay for it. You get the privilege of paying for it. Nobody's going to give you an offering after you preach. You get the, get the privilege of giving them an offering after you speak. And you get to love people in my name because I love them. And most of them will never be heard of. And some of them will be so dysfunctional they can't even say thank you. And this is what he said. This is what he said. Wash my men's feet. He said some of their hands are dirty. Don't reject them. Love them. Love them back to me is the intent. Those weren't the words he said. Love them back to me. I know to this day I'm accountable to not reject another pastor who's fallen. If I, it doesn't mean what they did was right. doesn't mean that we wink an eye at it. It just means that if we can, we f pray for one and love one and minister one that's overtaken and fall. Considering ourselves, uh -huh. least we uh -huh. fall likewise. Yes. Don't reject one of them. And then, it, then this is what he said. This will minister to you as a bless you. He said, they think I'm far away. They think they're all alone down here trying to serve me. They think I'm up in heaven and I am distant from them. And as he's speaking, suddenly his leg would uh, turn right back into the man's leg. And then it would turn right back into his leg. And this is what he said. They are my body. They are bone of my bone. And they are flesh of my flesh. I am always with them. Tell them. I will never leave them. And I will never abandon them because they are my very own body. It's not just a philosophical, religious thing about the body of Christ. In the mind of Christ, you are his body. Can we go a little deeper with that? If you're not his body, you can't exist in eternity. That's why he will have a body in eternity. He took a body, us. 
a bride and became one. And when I finished that moment, I couldn't speak for hours. My eyes hurt with intensity. The intense presence of Jesus will literally, the, the two or three times I've been to the very intense presence of a visitation with God, my eyes ached. Probably from crying so hard, but just, it was just so intense. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, my, my guys gathered around me. Nobody knows what to do. I'm just sitting there wailing, crying. I can't believe he loved me and, and enough that I, I was able to behold him. And it felt like this was at the genesis of some of the personal computing. It felt like while I was sitting there that there was a download into my brain and into my heart about the local church. I couldn't put it in words, but it felt like volumes were coming down and I was seeing this and I was seeing that and I was seeing this and I was seeing that. And what's cool about that is I will go someplace around the world. Half of what I do is in the pulpit. The other half is sitting at a table with a pastor. Complex problems. Complex international, diverse cultures, barriers, all kinds of problems. And I'll be sitting there talking to them. And the next thing I know, out of my mouth and out of my spirit will come words that answer what he needs. And I don't know where I got that. It's from the download happens in the encounter. Don't compete if you're a leader. Don't be territorial. Wash feet. And it will multiply over and over again in your life. This help anybody today? Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for great leaders watching online. Thank you for great leaders in this room that will minister to you. Seek first this such a wonderful king. They'll know their king. They'll be mighty. They'll do exploits. Thank you, Lord, that they will be trustworthy with your heart. Thank you, Lord, that you will... Take the striving out of us, the ambition, all of these things that the enemy tracks in, um, all of those things, let us be free. Lord, thank you for the identity of sons and daughters of God, to love you freely, to know you, to walk with you. And Lord, let us give away everything you give us in this kingdom. As Paul said, Lord, let our lives be a drink offering poured out for you. In Jesus' name, amen.